Well, good evening. Uh, welcome to my uh, studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. This is uh, Dean Tenney. Uh, we've been doing some shorts or carve outs from some of our uh, longer narrative lectures. And uh, I want to do a brief uh, overview of market value maintenance. I'll put this in the seven uh, playlist, low probability that you'll see it on your exam. I'll also put in the series 10 and 24 playlist, very high probability that you're going to see this on both the series 10 and the series 24. Now, if you're a series 10 and a series 24 and you need a brief review of a margin, if it's been a while since you've uh, encountered margin, uh, feel free to grab the narrative margin lecture from the series seven playlist if you uh, I think that's worth your time. That's about an hour. I get you back up to speed on uh, some of the basics. If you're 24, and I think I cover uh, margin and fiscal responsibility in that uh, narrative lecture. Okay, so two formulas here. We always love when we get a practical application question, because when we get a practical application question, we know what the answer should be. It's not an open to interpretation. The three styles of questions you get are recognition. That's just flashcard stuff. So either you know or you don't. That's a real challenge on 24, the minutia. Uh, practical application, can you do some math, which we're going to do. And you don't want to be giving up those because God knows on 10 and 24, you really you don't want to get as much of the practical application questions as you can. There's not a lot of them, unfortunately. A lot of them particularly make sense on supervisory exams. And even on the seven, the hardest level questions you get are what are called judgment questions. So uh, there's two formulas that could be very helpful or be very informative and one of the formulas are, well, two, but basically they're getting at the same thing. In a margin account, how can how far can the market move against me? That means if I'm, I have a long amount margin account, how far down can the stock go before there's going to be a problem? Or if I'm short, how far can the market go up, move against me before I'm gonna be at maintenance? Now, the reason that's gonna be uh, uh, helpful is as a supervisor or as a broker on the account, I know that any mark to market will either cause a maintenance call or not. So I'll show you how that plays out in uh, just a moment. So uh, here's our first one. So be careful, RTFQ stands for read the full question and make sure you're answering the question you're being asked. A lot of times when people are missing this question, it's not that they don't know it, it's just they didn't read carefully. There's a difference between uh, saying what is maintenance, minimum maintenance, which and a long account, very testable, is 25%. And in a short account is 30% of the market value. And uh, that's different than saying how far up or down can the account go? Those are different questions. You know, that's a different question than what is the market value? So uh, be careful, RTQ, uh, RTFQ. You're answering the question you're being asked and not the question you think that is there. All right, so let's look at uh, an example of this. So here's a guy who uh, we'll just assume he bought a thousand shares of 40, but he's perfectly balanced. Uh, perfectly balanced is a margin account that has a uh, 50% equity. And remember that's very rarely is that the case because every day is a new day. Every day the margin department is gonna do a mark to market and see where this is at. Now, as I warned you, be very careful on the exam whether we're asking you what is maintenance uh, on the account versus how far up or down can the market go? What I mean by that is if I ask you what's maintenance on this account, we would say times 25%, and you would tell me it's $10,000. And right now this person has no problem. They have no problem because they got 20,000. That's a different question than what is market value and maintenance? That's an entirely different question. And so here, let me just uh, reset this, get rid of the wrong answer. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the debit register, what we owe the broker term, that's the debit register or debit balance. And we're going to divide that by 0.75. And I find out that market value and maintenance here is 26,666. Sign of the devil. I'm joking. but Now, the reason that is so helpful, because that's market value and maintenance, let me just label that in a different color here. And the reason that's helpful is I know as a supervisor or a broker on the account that if this stock goes to 24,000, for example, there's going to be a maintenance call. Now, customers say, oh, maintenance call. I know T plus two plus uh, 
too. I go, no, 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 no. Make sure again, you are making our reading carefully. RTFU, again, there's a difference between a margin call and a maintenance call. Those are entirely, again, different questions with different answers. A maintenance call, is a, a margin call, excuse me, is a call for initial money. A maintenance call is due promptly, and that's to maintain the account. Those are entirely different things with different answers. So again, as I said, RTFQ, make sure you're reading the, uh, the full question there. Now, uh, this will just be an aim and shoot point and click math question, right? There's a margin account has the following ledger entries. What is market value maintenance? So I know 30 grand is not going to be a problem. So again, that's why this formula is helpful. Let's just put why this is helpful. Because if I know that this account has uh, thirty thousand dollars in market value right now, I know no, there's no problem. And if I know it's something below that, like twenty four thousand, I know there is a problem. That's why we, uh, you know, kind of wanted to be able to do that. You know, maybe I put a buy stop, or you know, could buy a put or do some uh, crazy thing. So, anyways, that's why that's very, very helpful to have that formula as one of our tools when uh, looking at the margin account. All right. So the other one that shows up now. Remember one other point. Uh, we also have the house requirement, and the house requirement, I don't have any house requirement that isn't, you know, uh, remember these are the minimums set by the SRO, this 25%, 30% is set by, set by the self-regulatory organization. Anyways, house requirements get more stringent. I know many firms that have a minimum of 40%, and so as a broker or a supervisor, um, God knows I'm going to have to explain to customers the difference between, I just made up the 40%, by the way. The house requirement can always be more stringent than anything we ever discussed. It just can't be more lenient. And uh, God knows in your career, you're probably going to have to explain to somebody whether it's a house requirement that's jamming them up or is it, you know, an SRO requirement. Then our New York Stock Exchange is uh, uh, messing them up. All right. So the other version of this, and I would uh, highly recommend you memorize that formula, 10s and 24s. Again, seven, a little lower probability, but uh, 24s and 10s. Make sure you have that formula and you own it intellectually. All right, so let's look at our uh, next scenario. Here's a guy who's short, and he's uh, got $60,000 in uh, cash in the account, credit register. Uh, that came from selling the borrowed stock plus the 20 he had to put with it. Yeah, we'll assume he sold short 1,000 shares of 40. It doesn't make a difference in terms of the mark. The mark to market is given the ledger entries, right? And again, be very careful what you're being asked. You know, if I'm asking you what is maintenance on the account, that's not what we're talking about. That would be 30% of that number. And that's not what we're asking. I'll just get my calculator. I'm terrible at arithmetic. And God knows you don't want to give up questions because you can't do arithmetic. So 40 times 0 0.30. Yeah, $12,000 is maintenance. And again, just make sure you're being careful what you're asked. That is not what we're discussing in this little uh, itty bitty uh, short, I guess we'll call it. Probably... I'm shooting to come in with the lowest time frame ever for me on the channel. So I'm going to start trying to do a little more of these carve outs or short ones with uh, particular topics. And if that speaks to you, you know, more than the narrative version of the lectures that are already there, we're coming to our second year. Uh, please tell me in the comment box, because, you know, we're trying to be responsive uh, to what our test takers would like to see. Anyways, well, we're asking a different question, right? The customer says, Dean, how far up could this stock go before I'd be have a problem? And I said, well, maintenance is 12 grand. He said, Dean, I didn't ask you what is maintenance. I said, how far up can the stock go before I would have a problem? And the way we're going to do that is, again, I would memorize the formula, is we're going to take the credit register, which in this case is 60,000, and we're going to divide by 1.3. And that will tell us, whoop, that will uh, inform us about whether there's going to be a problem or not. So I'll just take my calculator here, told you I'm terrible at arithmetic, 60,000 divided by 1.3 is a 46,153. Uh, by the way, 85, on the test, there will be no you know, rounding error that will cause you uh, to get this question right or wrong. And again, the reason that's so helpful is I know that as a supervisor or a broker on the account, I know that if I do a mark and the stock is, you know, 40, uh, uh, the stock is 40,000, I don't have a problem. Now, and I know that if I do a mark, by the way, that would be short mark value. And I know if the stock is 50,000, 
I know there's going to be a problem. Now, in this lecture, I'm not going to show you how to uh, mark that to market and how we mean a main call because I just think it's, you know, overkill. I don't think it's necessary as a test taker to know that, you know, uh, what is the maintenance call that's due promptly. I would know that. And then, you know, there's three ways to meet a maintenance call. Uh, you know, deposit additional collateral, give me some additional cash, or I'm either going to sell you out or uh, buy you in. All right. So uh, again, uh, hope you find that helpful. I'm going to put this in the playlist for the 7, the 24, and the 10. At 10s and 24s, be patient with me. I'm trying to get you some more content. It's just, you know, I'm a one-man show here, and <laughs> we have a, trying to populate the content where there's, you know, more test takers. Uh, but nines and tens and 24s, you're very important to me, always have been, because, you know, uh, you're peers in the industry, and uh, you can refer people on different legs of their testing journey to the channel, your SIEs, your Series 7s. Uh, we love that. If you're 7, refer the channel back to those people just starting their testing journey with the SIE. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. We're uh, trying to... I'll put some new content on the channel about once a week or so. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss that. And uh, lecture requests are greatly appreciated. If there's anything you want, want me to talk about, just let me know. All right. Bye-bye. I think it's bye-bye. I got to figure out how to kill the thing. <laughs>